the what <coughs> racism is that I want to look at the impact of stress due to racism um, because you know the, my basic thesis is that it is racism and racial social inequalities that is the underlying cause of health disparities in black America. And to sum it off with, I want us to take a look at this uh, schematic that I've drawn. What we see is Africans coming to the United States. And I think the first thing to realize is that Africans weren't well people when they got here to the United States. Uh, depending on the estimates, between 50 million to 100 million uh, Africans were taken off of the continent of Africa and only half of them made it to the United States. They were sh stacked in shipped worse than cattle and so that when they got to the Caribbean they were sick physically sick mentally sick the stress of enslavement of the transatlantic transatlantic voyage had it had its impact on the health of those people now we often think that the slaves come you know transatlantic slave trade went from Africa to the United States but the voyage was to the Caribbean where they were taken off the ship and they were and for a period of two years they had what was called a breaking in period that breaking in period was to uh, sort them different countries believed that slaves from different part of Africa made uh, excuse me that people from different part of Africa made better slaves they um, they deculturized them that was especially true for the United States the United States did not want uh, Africans who spoke their language are, are engaged in their cultural religious practices and they got them healthy uh, they fattened them up for the auction block All through slavery, there is a known slave health deficit because there were studies done. And once slavery ended, the United States understood that here was a group of people who could not read or write and had no education. And this is in 1865, you know. Uh, in which because there were laws that forbid it they had poor health and they had no wealth no income no way to earn an income because they had didn't have paying jobs and so they passed the Freeman Bureau's Act uh, which was to set up a Freeman Bureau and the idea was reparations to uh, help the, f the freedmen uh, undergo the transition from being enslaved persons to being freedmen. That act lasted one year, passed in 1866, repealed in 1867. Why? Because the cost of reparations was so huge that it would have meant taking property from white southerners or taxing northerners in order to be able to do what they needed to do. And no one wanted to do that because the reconstruction period was not about reparations and repairing the harm to the black slave but it was about repairing the relationship with the South. And they understood that if they took 
farms away from uh, white people and divide white slave owners and divided it up among slaves that 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 relationship could not be repaired so instead they decided to do nothing and to have no reparations nevertheless the reconstruction period was uh was a period uh in which uh, there was blacks elected into congress in fact uh, uh and in 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 black political power growth black education growth in reaction to that uh, many states pass laws authorizing legal apartheid uh, or what we call Jim Crow that occurred from about 1870 1880 through 1965 and, we, uh, and I put it through 1965 because that's when the Civil Rights Act of 1964, uh, so I should say 1964, uh, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 really undid, uh, was what undid uh, legal apartheid. The era of, of legal apartheid, uh, of, uh, uh, once legal apartheid was removed, you continue to have overt racism. But because of the civil rights era, uh, the, the beginning, 1964, was also the beginning of the transition to colorblind racism. Okay, because it became, as it became more and more unacceptable to be overtly racist, people moved more and more into colorblind racism. Uh, we, we see the election of a colorblind liberal as the complete transition into colorblindness. Uh, and, and the consequences of that we don't fully understand. Racism, both historical and current, both old-fashioned and, and colorblind, has resulted in deprivation and oppression, which resulted in embedded social and racial inequalities in communities. Because I think one of the problems we forget, we want to do is we want to look at individuals, but the whole communities are impacted. And those community, those social and racial inequalities incur in all of the things that we call social determinants of health. Wealth, education, environment, health care, uh, employment, and stress of racism. Those social determinants of health impact individual behavior and choices. Those social determinants of health impact individual behaviors and choices. I can't say that enough because many people will want to focus on individual behavior and choices. Can't we teach individuals to eat better? Can't we teach people to exercise better? And my point is, is that, that the choices people make are in a context. And that context is a social racial inequalities. Individual behavior then also impacts what we, individual behavior and choices then impacts the social determinants that an individual has. And so it's a vicious cycle. The result is, is that a person's mental and physical health is impacted and both genetics and biochemistry is impacted. Genetics, there's some studies coming out showing 
and it's not in the area of race it's in the area of post-traumatic stress syndrome from people uh, coming back uh, from the Vietnam War there's some studies showing that that post-traumatic stress syndrome had an impact on them that had an impact on their children uh, not just because they live with them but from a biological genetic point of view TGAD is tobacco, guns, alcohol, and drugs. So, I want to take a second to talk about chronic stress. Because, and not racism, but just any chronic stress you have in your life. Chronic stress is... Uh, when you have stress, stress, there is a stress reaction that you cannot control. The acute stress reaction occurs, but when the stress is relieved, everything goes back to normal. The problem with chronic stress is nothing ever goes back to normal. So that over time, your blood pressure gets higher and stays higher. Your uh, and so you end up with high blood pressure uh, and your and cardiac problems. You have local inflammation, redness, swelling, uh, heat and pain. And so you end up with arth arthritic conditions. Uh, you have uh, increased production of blood sugar. So you end up with diabetes. Uh, you have increased stomach acid, so you end up with ulcers. Uh, and it goes on and on. Um, the stress impacts your cholesterol, your protein production, your metabolism. And the chronic stress reaction, and this is well studied, is never... The problem with chronic stress is that your body never goes back down to a normal level. And the illness that are caused by or worsened by stress uh, based on research is long. And some of the illnesses that we have in our community, which is extraordinarily high, cardiovas cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, digestive problems, hypertension, obesity, all of those can uh, are, have as an underlying cause uh, chronic stress. Okay. 